Over the past year and a half, I've been running my producer program, Producer Accelerator, and one of the things that we do every single week is a weekly feedback session where my members can submit music for feedback, and in that time, me and my team have given feedback to around 600 songs from producers all over the world. And having given feedback on that much music, I've seen the same mistakes pop up all the time and the same issues come up that I can distill into one video for you. Of course, if you need help as a producer, I'd love for you to consider joining the program, but for now, I just wanna bring you as much value as I can for free. There's only one mix-related issue that I see most commonly that I I will touch on at the end of this video and the rest is entirely focused on producing problems. Number one, poor song structure. For every week that I give feedback, there is almost always one song per week in which the feedback is that the song structure is either confusing, too long, or unclear. Song structure is one of those things that so many producers honestly just gloss over, but at the end of the day, your song structure is one of the most important elements of a production. Intros that are too long, verses that are 32 bars long, taking a minute and a half to get to the chorus, taking 30 seconds after a chorus before the verse two, repeating elements too much, and not clearly defining the lines between a verse and a chorus. I mean, I've heard music where the chorus happens and I don't even realize it was the chorus until the second verse starts and then all of a sudden it's like, oh wait, that was the chorus? So think about your song structure like a story. Every story needs to move from one section to the next in a way that is clear, makes sense, and happens with good timing. Your songs are the same. Spotify data shows that most listeners will choose to skip a song 25% of the time in the first five seconds. So if your intro was 30 seconds long and basically nothing but a simple chord progression, most people have already skipped it before the verse even starts. And likewise, if your verse is 32 bars long and extremely repetitive, you get the point. Mistake number two is poor source and sound choice. Music is sound, so you need to make sure that the sounds you use are actually really awesome. This comes down to getting great sounds to use if you're using MIDI, then make sure you have great sounding sound libraries that you're using. I hate saying this, but if you want professional quality music, then it is going to be much more difficult if you are just using stock sounds inside of your DAW. I do not want you to mishear me though. I'm not saying it's impossible, I just said it's much more difficult. Likewise, if you are recording instruments like guitar or vocals, then you have to make sure that you are recording with proper recording techniques, AKA proper levels and a good environment, etc. One of the guitars that I own is this Anthem guitar right here, and it sounds like crap, which means I do not record with it. I also own an upright piano, and again, I don't record with it because it does not sound good enough to record with. A lot of producers are recording with instruments that are really cheap and are expecting to get expensive sounding results. And unfortunately with live instruments like guitars, a $200 guitar with major intonation problems will never sound like a $500 to $1,000 guitar that has great intonation. If you had the choice between investing $1,000 on a microphone or on an instrument or sound libraries, I would highly suggest the instrument or sounds, not the microphone. I mean, a $200 microphone recording a really nice guitar, like a acoustic guitar is gonna sound way better than a cheap guitar with a thousand dollar microphone. Mistake number three is subpar performances. This is in the vein of good source, but I'm specifically talking about the performances of that source. If you have vocal performances that are rushed or not locked into the timing of the track, then it will sound amateur every single time. Again, I see producers making music with very mediocre performances that could sound amazing, but simply don't. No amount of technology is gonna fix a bad performance. If you are really rushing apart or way out of time or the intonation is out of whack or the articulations are off, then it won't matter how expensive your gear is or what plugins you're using. When I work with vocalists or any instrumentalist in my studio, I am extremely picky about performances and I will do it over and over again until we get it right. I see my job as a producer, as a performance coach when I have musicians in the studio. It's my job to pull out the absolute best performances and I've worked with a lot of musicians. The best musicians get the best performances and the best performances make for the best productions period. Correct notes, by the way, is only a small fraction of what makes a great performance. So if you think, oh, we got the notes right, Dude, you're like not even scratching the surface of performance. Mistake number four is poor arrangement. Now, a lot of people get confused with this word arrangement. So here's a just a really quick definition. Arrangement answers three questions. What, when, and what is it doing? What is the instrument? When is that instrument happening in time? And then what is that instrument doing? A poor arrangement is usually a combination of a few things, but here are the most common mistakes. One, overloading frequency spectrums with too many instruments. In other words, if you have a piano playing mid-range chords and a guitar playing mid-range chords and vocals in the mid-range and then strings in the mid-range and then a synth in the mid-range, guess what? 
That's probably gonna sound really bad and be a massive headache to work with. I made a whole video on this topic, but in short, a good arrangement is going to disperse out your instruments over the entire frequency spectrum to save room for everything. If you are working on vocal music, then you need to preserve space in your arrangement for that vocal to exist. This is not a mixing decision. This is a producing decision. Too much stuff does not make a bigger track. It makes a messier track usually. So here's the second one. Producers want more low end, so they layer up bass and kicks that actually end up causing more frequency problems and actually muddy the water instead of adding clarity. I mean, lately I've been way more impressed with productions that use less, but does it very well, then uses more, and then ends up sounding like crap. Like having 100 tracks in a production doesn't make it a great production. It just means it has 100 tracks. But having only 20 tracks doesn't make it a small production. It might actually be that those 20 tracks were done extremely well. Stop counting how many tracks you have and start paying attention to what those tracks are actually doing. Arrangement that is well done should preserve space for the most important elements and every instrument has to work together. It's kind of like fitting puzzle pieces together. And a lot of producers are trying to fit together pieces that just do not fit. Now, the other big aspect of arrangement that I see is not dynamic arrangements. Arrangements that are not manipulating dynamic over time. So for example, if you are producing something that starts really big and then it continues to be really big and it's never letting up, that's actually gonna be really boring to listen to. You might be thinking, the energy is so big, the energy is so big, it's awesome. But think about all the songs that, I mean, pretty much every song I can think of where the energy level is really high always has points in the songs where the energy level drops considerably in order to make sure that those other moments where it gets big are actually felt like they are big. I've talked about this too before, but the context of everything matters a huge amount. So if you want something really loud, then putting something really soft in front of that really loud moment is going to be way better than having something that's like still pretty loud next to a part that's like maybe a little bit louder. It's not gonna work. Whew. I love talking about arrangement, by the way. It's so much fun. Anyways, mistake number five is poor drum production. If there is one thing I have really learned by giving feedback on so many tracks, it is that drum production is 10 times more important than most producers realized. Drum production can literally be the difference between a really, really good track and a really not good track. This comes down to a few things, but one of the biggest things is that I get so many productions sent to me that are literally just using stock kits without any changes to them or any layers. So I've had it happen where I've given feedback and I can literally say which kit they used in their DAW because it is so obvious that it is a stock kit. And in most cases, I'm right. Friends, that ain't a good thing. If I can tell you, oh yeah, that's the SoCal kit and logic. That's not a good thing. That's not something you should be wanting. Just loading up a generic drum patch and calling it a day is a great way of having very mediocre drum productions. There are many aspects to drum production, but the first is that you need to be using really great sounding drum samples if you are using MIDI drums. You might be seeing a theme here. And if you're using live drums, make sure it's a great sounding kit. Again, refer to mistake number two that we talked about. Once you get great sounds, you will very likely need to layer them, especially if you're making pop music, EDM, or any kind of rock or any pop rock music. It is very rare that I will make drum productions without layering my sounds. And if you're like, Nathan, that shouldn't be necessary, I'm telling you, this is a standard practice in the world of music production. It's literally one of the first things I learned when working at a studio like eight years ago for drum production. Every top tier producer I know does this. Next is that you have to have realistic sounding drum grooves. If your drum grooves just don't sound good, then yeah, it's not gonna be very convincing. I could go on a while about this whole thing about drum production, but it is one of the most key aspects of a production. You fail at that, it will literally stink the entire production. Mistake number six is poor static mix. Mixes. Here's the thing, a ton of producers get so distracted with plugins and EQ and compression and reverb and delay and all that jazz that they literally forget the most important tool in their toolkit when it comes to mixing is the fader. Like a very big chunk of your job when mixing is properly placing tracks in terms of volume, which is nothing but the fader. And a lot of producers end up with these mixes that sound incredibly one dimensional because they are trying to make sure everything is heard. And that is not how great mixes work. A great mix is going to be multi-dimensional. I talk about this quite extensively in my program. It's going to have depth. Some things will be in focus and other things will be out of focus. If you are working on a vocal track, then the vocals have to be front and center. And so often the vocals are like the same volume as the drums and keyboards or something, or in some cases even softer than those things. And that's not a good thing. A great mix is not about balancing tracks. It's actually about imbalance. It's about focus and putting things in the right place to draw attention to and draw attention away from various elements. Think about it like a picture. Like you've got this image right here that we're looking at. 
a great picture is gonna have a focus point. Like right now, I am the thing that is in focus. And then some things are gonna be blurred out. Like the behind me, my guitars behind me are kind of blurred out, right? Like that's how your mix should be. And that is mostly going to be done with the fader. And yes, reverb and spatial plugins are going to absolutely help with this. But if you can't dial this in with the fader first, you're actually starting with a pretty bad spot. A static mix should already sound awesome before loading up your plugins. And yes, of course, the rest of the mix is gonna help a ton and get it sounding even better, but your static mix should already sound awesome. If you wanna see how I approach producing a song from start to finish, then just a couple weeks ago, I made a completely free workshop going through my process step by step. It's basically an entire course distilled into one workshop. It's already helped hundreds of producers. I have a link right here where you can check that out. We'll talk soon.